Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry video covers the E2 elimination mechanism. The E2 mechanism is a reaction between a base and an alkyl halide. Here, the base is going to pluck a proton off of the beta position on the alkyl halide and electrons will flow to form a new carbon-carbon double bond between the alpha and beta positions as the leaving group leaves. On its way to products, the reaction goes through a transition state that's shown here. The transition state has multiple bonds that are partially formed and broken. There's a partially formed bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen. There's a partially broken bond between the hydrogen and the carbon here. There's a partially formed carbon-carbon double bond. There's double bond character developing in this transition state. And the leaving group is in the process of leaving. The products are an alkene that has a double bond between the alpha position and the beta position. And there's also a conjugate acid and the leaving group. The E2 mechanism is concerted, meaning it all happens in a single step. It's also bimolecular, which means the base and the alkyl halide come together in the rate limiting step. The rate law is expressed by the equation K, which is the rate constant, times the concentration of base times the concentration of alkyl halide. So rate depends on both the concentration of the base and the alkyl halide. If you were to double the concentration of base, you would double the E2 rate. If you were to double the concentration of alkyl halide, you would double the E2 reaction rate. If you were to cut the concentration of base in half, you would cut the rate in half, and so on. A strong base is needed for this reaction because the base gets involved in the rate determining step. We can graph the energy changes in the E2 mechanism, and we'll do that on this slide. Here we have energy on the y-axis and reaction coordinate, which has units of time, on the x-axis. This line represents the energy changes that the reaction undergoes. On the left side, we have reactants, which is base and alkyl halide. In the middle is transition state. That's the species at the height of the highest hump. And then on the right side, the bottom of the graph represents the products. We can extend a line from the reactants out to the middle of the graph and then measure the distance between starting materials and the energy of the transition state. That's E sub A, activation energy for the reaction. This is the amount of energy we have to invest to get the reaction to go. We can also extend a line out from the products to the middle of the graph and measure the distance between starting materials and products. That's a delta G. That's the free energy of the reaction, and that will enable us to determine equilibrium constants and how much products or reactants would be favored. In this case, products are lower in energy than reactants, and so in this case, the reaction would favor products. The reason is that in this case, the reaction is going from a strong base to a weak base. That helps favor products. In the reactants, hydroxide is a strong base, and in products, the chloride leaving group is a weak base. Elimination reactions increase disorder. This is important for understanding energy changes in the process. Entropy is disorder. Entropy change, or delta S, affects the overall energy of the reaction, delta G. This equation explains that relationship. Delta G, the overall energy of the reaction, is equal to delta H, the enthalpy term, minus T times delta S, the entropy term, where T is temperature in Kelvin. Entropy or disorder is increasing in an elimination reaction. There are more product molecules than starting molecules in this particular reaction. On the left side, you can see there are two species, while on the right side, there are three. This is an increase in disorder, therefore, delta S is positive, which helps make delta G negative and helps favor products. When delta S is a positive value multiplied by a negative T, that gives a negative term, which tends to make delta G negative and helps favor products. The effect of entropy on delta G is temperature dependent. The T term here determines the magnitude of the effect of the entropy change. So at higher temperatures, elimination reactions are more favored. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video. And consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.